Hello everyone, Rich here again. I reviewed a video I made a few years back called Keyboard Shortcuts Everyone Should Know and upon watching it I noticed that I went through it a little fast. I kinda rushed it a little bit. So I figure I would redo that video, that's what you're seeing now, the 2012 edition, and mention a few things that I didn't before. Go through it a little slower, explain things a little better, and you will be a keyboard master in a short period of time after watching this. Now the first thing to mention is that this tutorial is for Windows and Linux, meaning not the Mac. Macintosh computers, or any Apple computer in general, um, will you utilize the command key, which some people I believe call the Apple key. Um, because if you ever looked at a Mac keyboard it is different because uh, if, first of all you'll see on the F keys on the top it goes F1 through F16 on most most of them on the uh, on their desktop computer line anyway not on the MacBook as far as I know or maybe the F16 is there I'm not sure I don't use Macs so I know people that do I just don't personally use them but anyway the point is is that on a Mac things are done differently so if you wanted to do a copy which is control C in Windows and Linux that would be I believe a command C on the Mac so for keyboard shortcuts on a Mac this is not the video for you I'm gonna tell you that right up front because most of this will not apply because of the different way that Mac does things anyway moving on the reason Windows and Linux is the same when it comes to these keyboard shortcuts is because they both conform to the IBM PC specification and that's why they're the same and that's a good thing because it's a standard and standards are awesome that's why whether you are using Windows or Linux this will work so anyway like I said moving on we'll start with arrows now arrows is easy enough to understand you have four of them on your keyboard up down left and right and when you are in a text editor or if you are in another application which uses a keyboard allows for keyboard navigation or keyboard selecting such as an IRC client which will allow <coughs> excuse me for uh, some most of these commands here you can use your arrow keys to navigate and just move about so up down left and right you can see my cursor position moving easy enough to understand now with control and arrows now I have another blank notepad here so I'm going to type up a phrase real quick the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog now I'll take my mouse I, I will be uh, not using the mouse in a minute but for now just so you guys can follow along I'll be using the mouse I'll place it before the T at the beginning of this sentence now the difference between using we'll just use left and right here the difference between left and right without control and with control key is this. I'm pressing the right key, tapping it, and you'll notice that my cursor is moving character by character. Now I'm pressing, uh, tapping the left. If I press and hold the control key and do the same thing, watch the cursor position. Notice how it was going word by word instead of character by character. That is the difference between not using control and press and holding control and using the left and right arrow keys. So, we know that one. Shift and arrows is different because that's a selection tool rather than being a navigation uh, shortcut. So if we go back to the same thing now when I press left and right arrows it does this if I press shift hold it and pre tap the right arrow key you'll notice that it is selecting as I'm tapping now if I happen to be in the middle of a sentence like I'll put the uh, cursor in right before the middle of the word jumps I press and hold shift and start tapping the left arrow. It will make a selection in reverse. If I start tapping the right, it will eventually get to the point where I started and then start selecting to the right of 
where I started. Now if you let excuse me, let go of shift and you tap an arrow key, the selection disappears. The cursor will move where you wanted it to go, but the selection you had will have disappeared at that point. You'll have to select or should I say unselect or deselect itself and you will have to select it again. Using shift like this is essentially the exact same thing as if you were to take your mouse and do the same thing like this, except you're doing it with a keyboard. That's all that that means. Now when you have control and shift, okay, that means you're utilizing both the navigation shortcut of control and the selection shortcut of shift at the same time. So I will go back to the beginning of this line. I will press and hold shift and control at the same time and press the right arrow key. What it does is that it is selecting each word. It is uh, doing two things. It is going from word to word because of the control key that is being pressed. <coughs> Excuse me. And it is also selecting as I'm tapping the right arrow key because I have shift pressed. So control shift, that's what that does. And again, if I go to the middle of the line, if I go right, 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 it will select to the right. If I go left, selects to the left. If I let go of both and tap, oops, and tap like that, it will deselect. Oops, bring my notepad back there. Okay. So now we've done control, shift, control, shift. Now we have home and end. Now, these two keys, home and end, it varies wildly depending on the keyboard or whether you're even using a laptop on where these keys are. They are usually far to the right. If you have a number pad, uh, most laptops don't have number pads, I'm going to assume you're not using a laptop. If you have a standard keyboard, the home and end keys are to the left of your number pad on the far right side and they will either uh they will always be two it will either be uh two horizontal rows or two vertical rows usually and uh, but it like i said it varies wildly where home and end are on your keyboard but they are on the right if you know where page up and page down is on your keyboard which is also on the far right you will find that home and end are very close to those in a cluster or should be at least on laptops in particular it can go all over the place so I can't say that home and end are always in the same position because they're not depending on physically where they are on your keyboard but you'll find them they'll be there anyway so we'll discuss the function of home and end now for this one I'm going to just uh, delete this and type the word this is a test okay now if I want to jump back to the beginning of the line my cursor is blinking at the end. I want it to go back to the beginning. I press home. And now notice the cursor is over here. If I want to go to the end of the line, press end. It goes to the end. If I want to select everything from my current cursor position to the left, that would be shift home. Because remember, shift is a selection tool. So that means shift and home from the current cur cursor position will select everything to the left. If I place the cursor before the word is and I press shift and press end it will select everything after the current position. Now what I'll do here is I'm gonna copy, well actually uh, I'll get back to that because that's part of the next part. <clears throat>